Well, hello there. Come on in. Okay, so this is Brian Kelly, and he loves credit cards. If you're using a debit card or, God forbid, cash for purchases, you're literally leaving points and money on the table. It's like throwing money away. Throwing money away. Back in 2019, I would have probably agreed with Brian. But today, and in the UK at least, using a debit card is not like throwing money away. In fact, I would argue that using this card could be more rewarding than a credit card. These are currently my two main spending debit cards, Chase UK and Algebra. This one earns 1% cash back and this one 1.5 when I pay using Apple Pay. And while they lead the UK for cash back, there are a couple of problems. They're both capped, so I can only earn up to £37.50 from £3,000 of spending. And juggling multiple spending cards while trying to maximize their limits is a bit of a faff. So the aim is to not only consolidate these cards, but also upgrade to a spending card that'll earn more cash back and be more rewarding. Rewarding. The rewards of using the American Express card. Amex seems promising. They're known for credit card points and have very compelling welcome bonuses. But if we set aside those bonuses and focus solely on their ongoing spending perks, given just how rewarding these two are, there's a chance they could outperform even Amex. Before I embarked on making this video, I had a basic understanding of American Express. They're associated with wealth, they're a bit of a status symbol, and that they profit from higher than average fees charged to businesses when customers use their cards. Now it's those higher fees that allow Amex to invest billions annually in welcome bonuses and rewards. For example, in 2022, they spent 17 billion on rewards and services. To put things into perspective, JP Morgan, while ramping up Chase UK plans to allocate roughly a billion dollars over the next few years. And we all know how generous they've been with cashback. So in theory, Amex should have even better rewards. The first thing that hit me was the sheer array of choice. They have nine personal credit cards available and some have really fancy names. Behold the almighty Platinum Card, the Preferred Rewards Gold Credit Card, and the Marriott Bon Jovi Card. I mean Bonvoy. Nearly all have enticing welcome bonuses, boasting 5% cash back or thousands of points for spending thousands of pounds. If we want to calculate the potential value we can earn from cash back for either the bonuses or on an ongoing basis, well, that's a breeze. Take this one for instance. If we ignore the welcome bonus to earn that £37.50 I currently get, I'd need to spend an extra four and a half grand each month. I think I'll pass. But what about the cards that collect Amex membership reward points, Avios points, or nectar points. Trying to understand their value in pounds required me to delve into the labyrinth corridors of Reddit and money-saving expert. Okay, so um, I made a spreadsheet and I'll try not to bore you to death, but here's the gist. Extra special rewards, extra quick with American Express. Amex points can be redeemed with various brands, and if you spend a thousand pounds, you typically earn a thousand points. Right now, a thousand points is the equivalent to four pound 50 or 450 P, so each point is worth 0.45 pence. Alternatively, you could convert the points to Avios at a ratio of one to one. This can open doors to paying for flights or accommodation and can be more valuable than cash back because Avios fluctuates between one and two P depending on travel class. However, the real value lies in transferring from Amex to Nectar at a ratio of three to four. And because Nectar points are valued at 0.5p and Amex 0.45, by converting to Nectar, you not only end up with more points, but more value. In case this sounds completely foreign, let's just imagine you have 5,000 Amex points. We could use them to spend 22 pound 50 at Amazon, or we can swap them for Avios via the Amex website by linking a BA Executive Club account. Once we've done that, we can then go to the BA website, link our Nectar account and transfer them again. This now gives us a value of around £33 that we can use to spend at Sainsbury's, Argos or eBay. And while this does require a little extra work, by taking the time to do it, you are increasing the value of your Amex points by around 48%. You see, now that we've cracked the code and deciphered that the most value with Amex lies in Nectar points, we just need to work out which of these cards will give us the most. Hmm. I wonder. Obviously, it doesn't take a genius to work out that it's the Amex Nectar credit card. For every pound you spend, that'll earn you two Nectar points, which is worth 1p. So that's basically 1% cashback. You also earn more for spending with Nectar partners. But that does mean I have to spend £3,750 before I earn 37.50. On top of that, after the first year, this card has a £25 fee. Now, if I was only using Chase and spending above that £1,500 
cap and obviously losing out on cash back, then this would be a great choice. But for me, with my duo of spending cards, this just isn't going to cut it. Now let's explore the other cards and their welcome bonuses. Could they perhaps convince me to make the leap to Amex? The prestigious Platinum card dishes out 30,000 Amex points for four grand of spending. That's closely followed by the Gold Credit Card and the BA Premium Plus card, except the Platinum and BA cards come with annual fees. So enter the Gold Credit Card, seizing the spotlight for the ultimate welcome bonus. The issue with deriving the most value from Nectar is that you are restricted to redeeming those points at Sainsbury's, Argos, and eBay. But that's a sacrifice you'll have to be willing to make if you want to get the most from American Express. If you're not willing to do that, then unfortunately, Amex becomes less enticing. Even the Platinum card with its annual fee of 575 pounds isn't that rewarding. Are you aware that you can access over 120 lounges simply by showing the Platinum card? It has other benefits, but if we ignore those, then you'd have to spend around 7,000 pounds each month to recuperate the annual fee in Nectar value. That Platinum card is definitely not for me or for anyone really that's looking to maximize their savings or rewards. And unfortunately, there really isn't an Amex card compelling enough to stop me from using these two. That said, if we ignore provider rewards, there are definitely benefits to spending with a credit card. You can build your credit, which is especially important. You get purchase protection, AKA section 75. And if you're extra savvy, you could receive your salary, let it earn interest over 30 days before using it to pay your credit card. None of that is going to get me to switch, which doesn't mean it's a complete write off. If you're a big spender, especially on travel, then the BA card could be great. Or if you just love to shop at Sainsbury's, then consider the Nectar card. And if you spend £3,000 in three months, then get the gold card because that's an easy 166 in Nectar value, which is exactly what I'm going to do. And I know that makes me a bit of a hypocrite, but I, I do plan to just get that bonus and then switch back to my debit card duo at least until their offers come to an end. Hope you found the video interesting. Do give it a thumbs up if you did, and please consider subscribing. We're almost at 10,000. See you in the next video. Goodbye.